In late 1944, amidst the largest naval battle of World War II in Leyte Gulf, USS Princeton was focused on picking off the encircling Japanese aircraft that surrounded her deck, and her Hellcats were up in the skies, tearing apart enemy warplanes with the fury of madmen. The liberation of the Philippines was at stake, and the US needed to deal a heavy blow to the Imperial Japanese Navy once and for all to reclaim the territory. Suddenly, as the battle was at its highest point, with brutal encounters between aircraft engaging in dogfights and ships firing at each other with pinpoint accuracy, a lone Yokosuka D-4Y Judy dive bomber managed to slip through the Princeton's iron defense, dropping one single bomb that went through her deck. It was the first and last time Princeton was hit by an enemy bomb in her entire career, and as an unforgiving fire broke out, a crucial battle for survival ensued. An urgent necessity. USS Tallahassee was laid down on June 2, 1941, at Camden, New Jersey, by the New York Shipbuilding Corporation. Tallahassee was meant to be a Cleveland-class light cruiser, but the outbreak of the war in Europe and the rising hostilities with the Empire of Japan led the U.S. Navy to quickly expand its fleet and reclassify some of its unfinished ships. Thus, Tallahassee was converted into a small aircraft carrier that could be ready for battle sooner than other bigger vessels. Nine such ships would suffer this fate by orders from President Franklin D. Roosevelt, and Tallahassee became an Independence-class aircraft carrier in February of 1942. A month later, she was renamed USS Princeton. She was the fourth ship in the U.S. Navy to bear the name Princeton, a borough in west-central New Jersey where the Battle of Princeton had taken place in January of 1777 during the American Revolution. The ship was launched on October 18, 1942, sponsored by Mrs. Margaret S. Dodds, the wife of Princeton University President Harold W. Dodds. Princeton then completed her acceptance trials on February 22, 1943, and was commissioned three days later with Captain George R. Henderson in command. USS Princeton displaced over 15,000 tons while fully loaded and had a length of 622 feet, a width of 109 feet, a draft of 26 feet, and a waterline beam of 71 feet. Notably, she lacked a side armor belt, but still had some limited armor. One such example was the forward magazine and deck, which were protected by a two-inch thick belt. Meanwhile, the bridge and other parts of the ship had little to no armor, with less than an inch thick in some instances. When it came to armament, the ship was fitted with 22 Beaufort 40mm guns and 16 Ehrlichan 20mm cannons to fire at enemy aircraft. In addition, she could carry up to 45 aircraft of different models. Finally, Princeton was manned by a crew of 1,569 men, including sailors and officers, and her average speed was 31 knots. Preparing for Battle on May 1, 1943, Fighting Squadron VF-23, under the command of Lieutenant Henry L. Miller, completed carrier qualifications aboard Princeton and brought a dozen Grumman F4F4 Wildcats. Meanwhile, Composite Squadron VC-23, under the command of Lieutenant Martin T. Hatcher, also boarded the carrier with nine Douglas SBD-5 Dauntlesses and nine Grumman TBF-1 Avengers. Princeton then set sail for the Caribbean for her shakedown crews and carrier qualifications in the Gulf of Pariah, near Trinidad. Each of the pilots conducted over 30 landings with Hellcats and Wildcats, and after the arduous tests, Princeton and her crew were combat ready. Accompanied by the ships Bellow Wood and Lexington, the trio of carriers then reached the Panama Canal in July and headed for Pearl Harbor. The Pacific Fleet would then dispatch the three carriers to stage a simulated attack against Oahu and determine the defender's level of alertness. The crews planned the raid meticulously, and on the dawn of August 9th, the men attacked with all they had. The three carriers launched their aircraft from about a hundred miles out and swept through the island without any issues. Even the U.S. Army Air Force fighters failed to intercept them. After this triumph, USS Princeton was finally ready to fight the Japanese. War During the first weeks of August, Princeton transported the Seabees, or the Naval Construction Battalion, to the Elise Islands to construct airfields. 
The ship then left Pearl Harbor and made way for Baker Island as part of Task Force 11.2, becoming the flagship of Rear Admiral A.W. Radford. While the American soldiers landed on the island, Princeton's Hellcats spotted a Japanese H-8K2 Type II flying boat. The Hellcats swiftly destroyed it, sending it to the water before it exploded upon impact. The attack was so fast that the Japanese crew failed to send a radio report announcing the American landings. However, the Imperial Navy later sent two other Emilies to study the Americans at Baker Island. The Fighting 23s also got rid of them during a brief but violent attack, as Princeton's Hellcats tore apart the flying boats from multiple angles before they were engulfed by flames and disintegrated before hitting the water. Soon after, Princeton regrouped with Task Force 15 and conducted a series of raids against Makin Island, Apamama, and Tarawa on the Gilbert Islands. Princeton's pilots conducted over 170 flight hours on September 14th alone, while the Hellcats and Avengers from VF-23 faced terrible Japanese anti-aircraft fire before approaching the island. However, once they did, they rained hell upon the Japanese warships, flak positions, and grounded aircraft, while the brave Princeton pilots sank two motor torpedo boats, eight bombers, and three Emily flying boats after multiple strafing runs. Once VF-23 left the burning landscape at the end of the day after seven furious strikes, Task Force 15's Rear Admiral Ponell congratulated the Princeton pilots, saying, quote, Congratulations to all hands. Your alertness to meet the enemy in any way he chooses to fight is one of the many highlights of the day. It was well done. Ravaging the Japanese Besides their outstanding performance in combat, Princeton's pilots also managed to grab some photographs of the Japanese flying boats and Tarawa's lagoon side, which immensely helped the Marines to prepare for their future landings. After that, Princeton helped other task forces conduct airstrikes against Japanese airfields at Buka and Boni on Bougainville during the following months. Her air crews also neutralized Japanese heavy cruisers that attempted to reach Rabaul during the last days of October. Then, after resupplying at Pearl Harbor in early 1944, Princeton kept striking other Japanese islands such as Toroa, Majuro, and Aniwatak, subsequently heading to the Marianas to provide air support for the Marine Corps' landings at Saipan. The seasoned Princeton pilots went above and beyond the call of duty to strike fast and strike hard without being caught by Japanese anti-aircraft fire, and the ship was one of several aircraft carriers sent to intercept the enemy fleet that had departed from the Philippines to the Marianas. During the crucial encounters in the Battle of the Philippine Sea, Princeton's Fighting 23 took down over 30 Japanese aircraft, while her guns shot down another four. Then, after several successful airstrikes against other Japanese strongholds in the Pacific, Princeton and her crew took a brief break from the action, resupplied, and got ready for their last and most memorable fight, the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Last Stand In October of 1944, Vice Admiral Mitcher took over Task Force 38 and wreaked havoc on Japanese reinforcement staging areas close to Leyte in the Philippines. USS Princeton was one of several carriers that helped deal the campaign's opening blow to liberate the area. Between October 12th and 14th, Princeton's Task Force 38 attacked airfields, industrial plants, and any Japanese ship sighted on Formosa and the Pescadores Islands. Over 20 enemy ships were sunk. Princeton also sent some of its aircraft for reconnaissance missions to gather intelligence about the Japanese forces in the zone. As the dogfights and ship-to-ship -ship confrontations increased, Princeton's Hellcats took down several Japanese Bettys that attempted to drop bombs over the deck. Meanwhile, the Japanese aircraft also dropped several torpedoes close to Princeton during a coordinated counterattack, which she managed to avoid any significant damage. Princeton and the rest of the American fleet then counterattacked with a series of successful air engagements during the night. On October 20th, the U.S. forces began landing at San Pedro Bay in Leyte. Princeton provided support during those days by sending her aircraft against Japanese airfields and preventing them from taking off and attacking friendly forces. However, on October 24th, one lone Japanese Yokosuka D-4Y Judy managed to drop a bomb on top of the aircraft carrier. The device struck Princeton's elevators and made its way through the flight deck and hangar before detonating. A fire broke out immediately 
and despite the crew's attempts to stop it, it quickly spread, ignited by spilled gasoline. Several explosions immediately followed, and USS Irwin and USS Birmingham quickly approached to help fight the fires that began to consume the hangar deck, but it was to no avail. Princeton was now uncontrollable and collided with the assisting ships, with a large explosion also damaging USS Birmingham. Hours after the fires broke out, Princeton was finally abandoned in a cloud of dense smoke and flames, with USS Irwin picking the survivors from the sea. In total, 1,361 crewmen were rescued, and the USS Reno approached and sank Princeton with torpedoes. The ship's captain, John M. Hoskins, was also rescued, but lost his right foot while fighting for survival. He would eventually become the captain of the Navy's fifth Princeton, launched a year later. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of Princeton's last stand and the decisive sea encounters at Leyte Gulf. Stay tuned.